So recently a YouTuber by the name of Jack Gordon sent a flat earther to space for an episode on his YouTube channel, allegedly. It was actually supposed to be me, but I couldn't fly out to Wyoming in 24 hours. So they chose someone else and they asked me to do an analysis of their trip to space. So they send the flat earther up there by putting these virtual reality looking goggles on his face and basically tap him into a live feed of a high altitude balloon launch at about 18 miles high. So I did my analysis or my rebuttal and as expected, they only show about 10 seconds. Besides doing business with you. But Sebit wasn't the only flat earther we showed this footage to. We got emails back from tons of flat earthers that watched it and tried to debunk it. Some may think you see curvature, but I can assure you that you don't. They all had different opinions. And I absolutely put their entire adventure to bed. You know, if you watch it or you do any little bit of research, you would see that the smartest person on your side of the argument has already stated that it's impossible to see curvature from 62 miles high. Your launch went 18 miles. So to have a debate about seeing curvature there is really pointless. Like I said, this would be like going to find a specific bear in the backwoods of Texas. And when you ask the wildlife expert about it, he says, this bear's never been seen in America. It's only found in Russia. It's a complete waste of time. In a nutshell, there's no curvature at 18 miles high, nor 62 miles high, or anywhere for that matter. And here is my full analysis. So this is a high altitude balloon launch. This is purported to be at about 18 miles high. Now, some may think you see curvature, but I can assure you that you don't. If you take clear shots, I happen to have friends that have sent balloons slightly higher than this, 20 plus miles high, you can see at nighttime, uh, without as much you know, haziness and cloud cover on the horizon, that the horizon is perfectly flat and eye level. And this has been replicated numerous times over and over, and no matter how high we go, 20 miles is about as high as we can get, the horizon is always shown to be perfectly flat and eye level. Now you may be asking yourself, I've seen some high altitude balloon footage where it looks like the horizon is curved. There's a couple ways that can be happening. The most common one is, is they're using a wide angle or a GoPro lens. Now we noticed this during the VICE launch where they sent a joint up into space. In the very beginning of the video, the earth is drastically curved at, from the ground level, proving that it is a GoPro or wide angle lens. Uh, giving the illusion of a curved horizon. The same thing was used during the Felix Baumgartner Red Bull jump where he did his edge of space jump from about the same height. We are shown a drastically curved horizon, but when you see the real shots out of the capsule without the uh, GoPro lens, you see the horizons perfectly flat. And the other telltale sign to notice that is when the camera is bouncing around up there, you'll see the earth go from drastically curved to flat to even inverted at times. As you'll see in these videos showing now, the top left one is bouncing around, changing the shape all the time, while the ones on the lower video are remaining perfectly flat, just as just as we observe. So then you also have to ask yourself, how come when NASA shows us uh, pictures and videos from around 100,000 feet and they show this very dramatic curvature of Earth, then we send amateur balloons higher than that and it's shown to be perfectly flat. It's okay if that's not where the curvature was and maybe they were using a GoPro for that launch, but it's very deceptive to not tell the public and present it as if it's the true curved horizon. And last but not least, if you still want to dispute this, if you think maybe you saw it from an airplane, maybe you saw it during skydiving, maybe, maybe you saw it in one of these high altitude balloon launches, let me remind you that mainstream science agrees that you cannot even dream of seeing curvature from 62 miles high. Now let me repeat that. We just had a little debate and discussion about 20 miles high with a high altitude balloon launch. Neil deGrasse Tyson, leading astrophysicist and essentially the authority on space science, has said on numerous occasions that Felix Baumgartner, nor Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos during their edge of space flights, not even 62 miles high, can they dream of seeing curvature. So there's no curvature that has ever been detected in any high altitude balloon launch. And if that's something that you've seen, you may wanna check, rewind the video, and see if there was a curved horizon from the ground level. That will tell you everything you need to know and who's being honest about their launches. And that dude who jumped out of a perfectly good balloon, um, <laughs> what's his name, Felix! 
Felix Bumgardner, the, the honesty of it would greatly diminish what I think people thought he was actually doing. And not only that, they made sure to photograph him standing there with a really wide-angle lens, which curves horizontal lines. Okay. So in the photo, you see this curvature of Earth's surface, and he said, wow, he's in space, look at that. No, he's not. At that height, you don't see, you don't see the curvature of the Earth if you are two millimeters above this beach ball. <laughs> you just don't. That stuff is flat. Wow, so I just got to give a special thanks to everybody who was making excuses about why it's not good to have a live, friendly discussion about this topic. I mean, y'all are really cracking me up. The, what, what's the first one? The first guy actually agreed to a discussion, but then said, oh, no, I've got plans with my girl, maybe tomorrow. And then when tomorrow came, it was, oh, what's the point? What is there to discuss? What? Isn't this one of the most complex, multifaceted, controversial topics around right now? What is there to discuss? Have you lost your mind? And then the next person. Um, what? Well, I don't know. Uh, I think that you're just going to... People who use live debates can use slick rhetoric. What? Can you, You're afraid that if we talk in a discussion, that it's going to... My rhetoric is going to outweigh your facts? What kind of sense does that make? What if I said that? Oh, I don't want to talk to that globe person because even though I'm right and they're completely wrong, I'm afraid they may talk too slick. What? And then everybody else is basically, uh, oh, there's, there's no point. There's no point to do. There's nothing to discuss. There's nothing to discuss as you leave 20 more comments under my post. I've never, it's, it's absolutely comical that people think that it's better for me to sift through hundreds of comments, lose track of them, misinterpret people, that's a better way to communicate than a live discussion? Now, I did have some pilots and sailors comment and reach out in direct message, but you all really don't want to know what they said, do you? I mean, it doesn't help your case at all. They basically told me that nothing about their profession proves that the Earth is spherical, and that many of them, when they looked further, they found out where we actually lived. So if anyone has a pilot or a sailor, I mean, please, let's, let's do it. I want to have a discussion. I want to talk about those boats going over the horizon. I want to talk about what these other pilots have seen at 30 to 40,000 feet. Because if not, I'm just going to have to have a discussion by myself and do a Q&A, which I think is kind of boring. I don't want to just talk to myself. So if anyone can find someone, please reach out, send them over. You know, whenever I post about this topic, without fail, there's always a sailor or a pilot that pops in and says, no, Justin, you're wrong. I have sailed around the world. I have flown around the world. Well, this is an open invitation to any pilot or sailor that would like to come on and discuss with me. I wanna know specifically, what is it about your profession, about your decades long experience out on the water or up in the air? What is it that tells you that the earth is a sphere? I'd love to discuss it. I have apparently no idea what I'm talking about, never sailed a boat, never flown a plane. But I'd love to talk about what makes you think that your experience out there proves the Earth to be spherical. We can talk about circumnavigation, boats going over the horizon, the way that airplanes fly. We can even talk about the NASA, FAA, CIA, and Army documents that talk about a flat, non-rotating Earth in their training manuals. And believe it or not, I've been challenging people to this discussion. You know, I don't want to have a debate where I jump all over you or have any of the commenters gang up on you. I just want to have a discussion. And ironically, no one wants to do that. A lot of tough comments in the comment section, but no one wants to talk about it like two grown adults. So I can already predict that nobody wants to smoke. <laughs> nobody has, and I'm sure nobody will. And just for those, we're not gonna probably have a discussion, for those that wanna see what's going on here, this is how easy it is to circumnavigate in the flat map. I mean, you go from South America to Australia, around to Europe. I mean, you just go around. It's like going around your neighborhood. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how to do this. Now, it's only been done east to west. It's never been done north to south because anyone who tries to go too far north or too far south, that is a restricted zone and you're not allowed to do that. So could you theoretically fly up to Alaska and then turn around and fly back down to the tip of South America? 
Yes, you could, but that doesn't circumnavigate all the way around. It goes all the way to the north and turns around and go back. Or you can travel around in this circle shown. It's not a perfect circle, but you can travel around the world. It does not make it a sphere. And I've had a very similar thing happen to me with this topic. I've literally had people leading voices from other topics like 9-11 or other you know, conspiracy truth topics that we've tried to expose. People come up to me and pull me aside and say, Justin, I know it's flat, but I can't say anything about this because it would absolutely destroy my career and the work I'm doing on XYZ. So just know we had Brian Mullen, who was an engineer who was exposing the uh, unrealistic impossibility of satellites in orbit. Uh, we've had Pilot LX, um, uh, NASA whistleblower. So they're out there. But just know that many of them are keeping quiet because the topic is still so taboo, they're afraid of the ridicule from society, their peers, their coworkers, etc. I'm not saying it's a valid excuse and I hate the fact that that's the world we live in, that people are self-censoring. But just know there's way more people out there that know and just aren't willing to pipe up yet. Try to find a real photograph of the Earth from space. That's the real kicker. One of the things that got me into this was that that famous picture on your iPhone that everyone grew up with is not a real photograph. Why wouldn't you just use a real one? We've got tens of thousands of satellites, some that can take pictures of things 20 million light years away. But you haven't, in, in 50 years, you haven't turned one of those around to take a picture of the Earth. You had to use a composite. And those aren't my words. NASA's own data visualizer, Robert Simmons, said, we piece it together and I draw the clouds on and I use the Photoshop tool and I paint the oceans the way I think they would look. They're literally using computer generated images and before that it was paintings. So you really have to ask yourself, have we ever been high enough to take a photograph of the entire earth? Good afternoon, commissioners. Today I'd like to bring to your attention a potential fraud on an enormous scale happening in your county. There's now clear evidence of NASA using numerous methods to grossly mislead the public about astronauts being on the International Space Station. During interior ISS scenes from NASA's own live feed, the use of wires, harnesses, green screens, and virtual reality have been detected to achieve the appearance of a weightless environment. Examples of this include astronauts fading in and out of the screen, green screen glitches, grabbing objects that aren't really there, pulling on invisible wires, getting tangled in their harnesses, and even astronauts appearing out of thin air. This begs the obvious question. If they're really up there, why are they using Hollywood techniques to fake the footage? Now, unfortunately, I can't show you these clips in here today, but I will be sending them to you. Outside the International Space Station, during spacewalks, air bubbles have been recorded on numerous occasions. How is it possible for air bubbles to be present in the vacuum of space? I once questioned astronaut Scott Kelly about this phenomenon. His body language and answers only created more questions. In 2013, astronaut Luca Parmitano nearly drowned during a spacewalk when his helmet filled with water. This happened again just last year. Air bubbles, helmets filling with water, and drowning. Are they in space or are they underwater? Now what's really interesting is that they train for spacewalks in an underwater pool with a complete ISS replica. Now, surely they aren't filming these spacewalks in an underwater pool and then editing them to appear if they're in space, because that sure would be something, wouldn't it? I'm calling on the Brevard County Commissioners to open a full investigation into NASA's fraudulent practices and use of taxpayer dollars. It costs NASA $3 billion per year to operate the ISS, and if they don't have a darn good explanation as to why they're faking these videos, I and the public would like a darn good explanation as to where our tax money is going. And if they are indeed faking the funk, it is our duty to expose and eliminate this fraudulent and astronomically wasteful ISS program. And look, I know what you're all thinking. The NASA is part of the federal government and you're just county commissioners. Even if what I'm saying is true, what can you do? But let me remind you, not only is this happening in your county, as public officials, you have the platform and the ability to make a statement or hold a press conference, alerting the public, state, and federal authorities to investigate further. You have the power to start the conversation. Video evidence of everything I described today will be emailed to you all, and I truly hope we can get to the bottom of this. I look forward to the day that $3 billion annual budget is put towards our veterans, our homeless, maybe some of that mental health stuff the young lady just spoke about, and the revitalization of Brevard County. Hey, Marvin, how you doing, sir? Check it out. Here's that book I was telling you I just got. Um, this book is so beat up. I was lucky to get it, so check it out. 
page 318. Um, right down here, 6900, the diameter of the equator. So check it out. He's got this little diagram, uh, 900 nautical miles per section, per 15 degree section going around the equator. So you got the north center here to the equator is like 3450 nautical miles. And of course, uh, right here is the whole thing is double so and uh the diameter being 6900 is actually the radius of the entire flat earth so i think that's really cool i was just showing you guys that in my diagram so it's just like a clock just like a 24-hour clock and then uh this converts to what 21 677 nautical miles put that to statue miles it's very very close to what the globe claims is the equator of the earth so what the globe claims what the globe measures here right here if you measure the globe equators arc length between longitude lines you have this circle it's really hard it's really easy to understand the globe cannot have this as their equator this arc length is 60 nautical miles per degree 900 nautical miles per section it's arc length arc length arc length look at how big these are look at how big these are that's just how math works that that can't work that can't work bro so um just to show you i didn't want to get in all that sorry but just to show you 6900 is the diameter that gleason claims is the equator peace and love to you sir all right, so I know I'm always exposing the devils of the industry, but today I want to talk about somebody who gave up the limelight, gave up the spotlight, you know what I'm saying, to go against them. Let's talk about B.O.B. If you don't know who B.O.B. is, you remember the song, Nothing On You with Bruno Mars, you know, the other dude on the song, that's B.O.B. He on the freshman cover, he an up-and-coming artist, and he blowing up fast, you feel me? And out the blue, he just disappeared, you feel me? Because he didn't want to push the agendas they wanted him to push. He didn't want to sell his soul. Then he started dropping little hints and stuff on Twitter, you feel me? Like, making posts saying the earth is really flat. So after folks clown him for saying the earth is flat, he made an album called Earth. And you see how he got the flat earth with the dome around it? That's how it really is. And you know the elites weren't having that. They weren't going for that at all. This is a song on the album called Flatline. I want y'all to pause this video and read those lyrics. He was exposing NASA, he was exposing the elites. I just really want y'all to go listen to the album. The question I always hear this question, how do you get into the music business? Were you let in or blessed in? I'm guessing I never signed my name in blood or sacrificed my best friend. I got as far as I could go before I hit a dead end. Sit back and let it set in. How do you go from doing songs with T.I. and Kendrick Lamar getting 131 million views? I mean, he even had a song with Lil Wayne at 36 million views, you feel me? How do you go from this to just disappearing, you know what I'm saying? The crazy thing is, he never disappeared, though. You feel me? Bro been dropping music. I'm talking he got a podcast where he exposing these folks, all type of stuff. But it's not mainstream, you feel me? Like, they blackballed, bro. Well, we barely can see his stuff. They took all his music off the platforms, all of that stuff, you feel me? Let's get into his most recent music video, How To Make Clones. Let's talk about this part of the song. They predicted 9-11 20 years before they dropped. Tell me how was a prediction if they wrote the whole plot? Don't know who behind the curtain could be bots at the top. The invasion been happened. The bodies are already swapped. This is my favorite part of the song right here. Uh, is it just me or is artificial intelligence mimicking melanin? What if melanated people was somebody's experiment? They hid the ancient temples, then just blamed it on aliens. NASA stole their symbols from an African tribe and acted like it was some they just seen up in the sky. Knew my school wasn't had me reading them lies and had I drinking milk for lunch at 1045. EMF through your body, iron in your body, silicone in your body, similar to robotics. Now to all these rappers that chose the money or was just too scared to go against them, B.O.B. chose to be for us, and that's why I would B.O.B. hard. Hello, everybody, it's me, Flat Eye Panda. I'm zooming on the moon, and just wanted you guys to know, I'm starting to be a little bit confused about this. Uh, something about the moon, 
It seems to be a solid spherical object. I don't know. It, I think I must have been mistaken. God help me. I don't know what, guys. Maybe the Globies are right. Maybe something we're not seeing that they are seeing. Some fucking silly ass ball. Why didn't I see this coming? I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. I, I think I'm gonna have to bail out on this one. I must have been wrong. I must have been wrong. Yeah. I must have been wrong. I don't know, man, guys. Guys. Hey, guys. Wait. What? Uh. Fuck! Nobody's falling for the spherical globe. The moon is not solid, and the moon is not a spear, and it does not rotate. It turns clockwise, and it's plasma. No man has ever landed on the moon. So, booyah. See how uh, NASA can lie? So could anybody. Think for yourself. Question everything, my friends. The Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer, Al-Biruni, who lived between 975 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online. But if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store today and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.